Praise God. Amen. Turn with me to Acts chapter number 4. Acts chapter number 4. And then, Sister Rachel, would you in just a few minutes read for me? I'll be in a few moments. Uh, Genesis 27, verse 35 and 36. And there'll be some other verses we'll look at. In two weeks, we'll start the Foundation Series. And uh, I'm hoping to use that as a tool, maybe to get some more folks out but also uh, use it to refresh our minds and our memories. So I'm just looking at some just evening Bible studies that we not are in a series, but we just look at uh, during the evening. And then next week will be something different than what we want to foundations. But I, I, I want to uh, ask a few questions uh, to us today uh, and challenge our minds. There's a couple of things about living for God. Number one, I love when people are living for God. Uh, and, and you hear me say this often, but uh, whether being a pastor, uh, my role is just being a Christian in the community, or my role as a chaplain, mo most often I'm approached with a lot of folks uh, coming to the end of life. And as they come to the end of life, you know, they have a lot of questions. One of the things that I, I, I love most is when you meet someone who's truly ready to meet God. You know, that they say, I'm, I'm all right with God. My family's not. You know, that's usually what I hear. My family doesn't want me. But I'm ready to go if the Lord should call me home. But not just looking at our life as Christians as being ready to go home. Uh, but but I, I read, uh, I was working at the hospital today, and there was a sign up. And I, I won't get all the, right, but it said, I hope that when the end of my life comes, I have no more talents. So that when I get before God, He will know that I used every bit of my talent for Him. That was pretty good. So, not only being ready to meet God in eternity, but living life and living life the way that we want to live it that God is honored with our life. And we know that we live life doing what God wants us to do. And so I, I want us to think about these questions tonight. Who am I? What is my name? Why have I been through things in my life? And how do I find purpose in my life? I think all these are good questions for us to ask even as believers making sure that we are where we need to be. And so uh, let's first look at that question, who am I? In the book of Acts, chapter number 4, starting at verse number 10, the Bible says, But be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at not of, of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. How many of you know that there's power in the name of Jesus? There is power in the name of Jesus. A power to save people from their sins. Amen. When you pray uh, uh, and, and you, you, you ask God to come into your heart, you ask Him to deliver you from the bondages of sin, from past sin, from present sin, from the power of sin uh, that has a dominion over us, uh, he breaks the bondage of sin. In fact, uh, my name doesn't have the ability to save people from their sin. Robert Seville doesn't have that ability. Stacy Lehman doesn't have that ability. In fact, really, in a lot of ways, my name, Brother Justin, doesn't affect anyone but me. It may affect a few people uh, uh, in, in, in a broad sense. But for the most part, my name only affects me 
and it identifies who I am. And when you say, who are you? And you, you, you go to the bank and Sister Tina, she'll want to give you a loan and she'll say, hi, I'm Tina Lehman. I'm the manager of Outbox, whatever bank that is. Uh, uh, branch of, of all the rivers in the world's money, right? <laughs> Uh, or, or, you know, you go uh, get, get your lawnmower fixed. Hi, I'm Craig Peterman. I'm your service man for your lawnmower today. We'll have your lawn looking better than ever. <laughs> All right? And Brother Doug, he said, Hi, I'm Doug Lehman. I'm the corrections officer. You better behave or you'll be behind the bar even longer. <laughs> so there's power in, 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 in your name and the identity of who you are. When you think about that, identity is a powerful thing. Really, it is a powerful thing. Who you are, who you identify as, is, is a powerful thing. And I wonder, when we look at life, does someone have the ability to change their identity? Or do they have the power uh, to change what their life purpose is? I would think so. In fact, I believe so in the Bible. In the Bible, names are very, very important. I know that's familiar to every one of you. In fact, uh, let's talk about some twins, Bill and Brindley. In the Bible, there are some twins, and, and uh, there were some brothers named Jacob and Esau. Think about their names and what they meant and how that identified them. Now, we're getting so far tonight. Just bear with me as we put a little bit of a foundation. Jacob, his twin brother, was Esau. Uh, he deceived Esau into selling or trading, however you want to look at, his birthright for a pot of soup. I've been pretty hungry before, you know. Uh, uh, we went to the zoo most recently, and, and it was so blasted hot. I mean, hot, hot, hot. And uh, all they needed to do was just have the sign to the ice cream shops. I paid more for ice cream than I ever paid in my life since was facing, but it was the best tasting ice cream in the world because it was so hot it cooled me off. And so here is, 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 is uh, Jacob. He deceives his brother Esau uh, uh, into trading his birthright for a bottle, uh, a bowl of soup. And then not only does he deceive him there, but we find Brother Justin, he deceives his blind father as well. So his, his, his name really is marked as being a deceiver. Sister Rachel, would you read Genesis 27, verse 35 and 36? Planter or deceiver. I know that you're familiar with that from times past. But can you imagine your whole life living with a name that identifies you as being a deceiver? How would you like to be known as a thief? That name that identifies you for an entire life, but that was his name. His name identified with the character of who he was. And uh, you want to talk about another set of twins in the Bible. So we have Jacob and, and Esau. But another set of twins is Cain and Abel. We look at them. Yeah, I mean, I should say they're twins, but, but uh, they're brothers. I, I'll, I'll leave it that way. Some have, have said. Uh, uh, and so Cain and, and Abel. Abel uh, was killed by Cain because uh, he gave a better sacrifice to God. And a Abel gave to God, Brother Eli, you were already talking to me tonight about this prior to church. Abel gave to God what God wanted. However, Cain gave to God, Brother Justin, what he wanted. And so uh, when we look at the, the names of these individuals, I'm mostly just people want to look at Abel. And you look at his name, and his name means breath. How, why does his name mean breath? Well, many scholars would say that his name means breath because he lived a very short life. He didn't have a lot of breaths in his life. And so it, it, it symbolizes his life that, that, that it was short. But another meaning of Abel's name is vanity. Now, how can Abel have vanity when it was Cain who did what he wanted, but Abel did what was right? Well, unfortunately, uh, though Abel wasn't a vain person, he was killed because of uh, Cain's vanity. And so uh, Abel becomes named or labored, not by his own character, but by what someone else did to him. So sometimes, uh, because of the actions, 
options of others because of what other people do. We carry a label for a lifetime because of someone else. You know, uh, maybe a family, maybe they're dirty. And you, oh, that family's dirty. You know, that, that Jones family, they're, they're a dirty family. Or, 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 or that Smith family, they're nothing but a bunch of drunkards. You know, because sometimes that name is given and that identity is there because it's been given by someone else. I, I'm going to go as far tonight as to say this. There can be generational curses put on families. There can be generational curses put on people. Uh, and so Jacob carried around the label of being a deceiver and a, a, a thief. And he deserved it, but Abel carried around this name of, uh, uh, of vanity, but he didn't deserve it. But never, nevertheless, both of them had this label for their life. Isn't that interesting? How are you identified? What is your identifier? What is your name? These two men were identified by their name, and it wasn't a good label or a good identifier. And I wonder, were they really labeled for life? No, they weren't. I said that they were. But I have to look again and realize that Brother Eli, they were not labeled for life. Turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter number 32, and I explain what I mean. I wonder if anyone can hear you're carrying around a label that was given to you not because you did something, but because maybe your family or because someone did something to you and you get the label. In Genesis chapter number 33, verse number 24, the Word of God says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled, uh, um, uh, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joy as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? What's your identifier? What's your name? And he said, let me find myself here. Whoa. And he said, Jacob. And he said, that thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hath power with God and with men and hath prevailed. And Jacob asked and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore it is that thou doest ask after my name and be blessed. And he blessed him there. So we find that Jacob, he didn't have to carry that label of being a thief and a deceiver all of his life because when he came in contact with God, God changed things. Whatever our name is, whatever our identifier is, whatever those things in our life may be, when we come in contact with God, it can be changed. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel, which means you have power with God or you're an overcomer. Amen. I like to tell you tonight, and some of you have already experienced this in your life, and this is the news that we need to be sharing with others, that no matter what your label is, when you come in contact with God, God changes your label. God changes your identifier. God changes your name. And He gives you one that has power with Him and power with God. Hey, can you imagine? Uh, the experience that Jacob had. Amen. He, he didn't let go uh, of God. Uh, and this great experience. Uh, but his friends and his family and those who were around him, they knew him, but they didn't know about his experience with God. At least not yet. And so, can you imagine Jacob comes home to his wife? Now, what's the identifier? She used a sister Rachel. She didn't say, oh, Israel. She said, Brother Justin, she said, Jacob, where have you been all night? Jacob, why are your clothes so dirty? Jacob, why are you walking that way? You see, Brother Eli, she still knew him as Jacob. The identifier hadn't been changed in her eyes yet. But give it time, it will be changed. 
because he's walking and he's talking and he's living differently. And God gave him a new identifier and soon everyone would know about that. Amen. Even though people were still referring to him as Jacob, he knew that he was changed. And he said, I know this. I'm not the person that you used to know. And so it's it's interesting. Do you know that in our culture, you can change your name if you don't like it? If you don't like Craig Peterman, Brother Craig, you can go to the court and you get, get your name changed. Now, every state is different in the rules. Now, you may pay in Pennsylvania, I looked this up, you may pay anywhere from $20 to the upwards of two to $300. I'm going to vote we're in Pennsylvania. It's going to be between two and three. I just got my taxes. <laughs> so you have to pay a price. And then most places it will take, in Pennsylvania, they say it will take anywhere from four to six weeks for that to go through. You have to go and you have to stand before the judge. And there has to be a time period in which everyone will, will, will take notice of this and may be posted. There has been times that it's been posted and people will look at this and be able to contest it. Amen. And, but yet, if you pay the price, your name will be changed. I want to tell you that even if you run into people that you ran around with years ago before you knew Jesus, you have time. They're going to see who you are. The price has been paid as you knelt at an altar in prayer and you surrendered to God. And God said, you're not the old person, but I give you a new name and a new identity. Look up because your redemption draws Aren't you glad that who we are is not identified alone by our name, but our identity is found in Jesus Christ and in who He makes us to be? A couple of weeks ago, I said to you about the pie. The word was again that we looked at on Sunday morning. And, and, and God told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house. I shared the story already. And he looked and God refashioned it. So we are a creation of God, but we're a recreation and a recreation and a recreation. Our name and our identity is given by God. And that is who we should live in identity with because we've been created in His image. And He has a plan and He has a purpose for our life. If we were a deceiver, if we were a liar, if we were a thief, if we were a drug, if we were addicted to something, whatever it would be, God says that's a race and that is gone. And now your identifier is that you have power with me. And I'm giving you power with men. Even though they may say, hey, 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 uh, Sister Stacy, where you been all night? Hey, Sister Stacy, why are you walking like, hey, brother, why is your clothes all dirty? They may identify you as old. But God, will show you your identity through Him. Thank God that there's a price to pay to be paid when we're changed by God. Amen. But if we're willing to hold on to God, God is willing to change us and identify us. This, Brother Eli, I thought about during youth camp. So what is our name? Our identity is given by Christ, Brother Justin. So a big question that probably all of us have looked at, we've looked at, and we'll probably re-look at, and we'll probably re-look at again, that the Lord should tell you, we'll re-look at it several times throughout our life, and we'll say, what is my purpose? And how do I find my purpose? I think it's good to do that. Where are you now? Where do you want to be three years from now? What steps do you need to take to get there? I think all those things are good. Those are good things to look at. But I think the greatest thing is making sure that we are doing what God wants us to do. And what is my purpose? If you look at John and John chapter or Revelation chapter number four, John says he stood and he 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 beheld a door. It was open before him, and he heard a voice which sounded like a trumpet. And he said, "Come up hither, and I will show you things which shall be hereafter." 
And so we find that he is there and he is in the middle of all the worship of the 24 elders and, and all the great things that is happening there. It's, it's wonderful uh, as he sees that the, the praise that's going on, the worthiness to God to receive glory and honor and power for you have created all things and, and by you all things exist. And I'm using my own terminology there. And, and so uh, uh, many people... Uh, in the beginning of their life and throughout their life ask the question, what is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of my life? Well, I think without a doubt that we have to answer the first question is this, that the purpose of our life is that God wants to save us. I think that's the greatest purpose. And I know that we all here this evening uh, are, are saved, but, but, but let me share with you once again, your real purpose is being saved and keeping your salvation. Huh. The identifier is there's one name by which we must, the Bible says, be saved. And that name is Jesus. That is an identifying name. But that name should also identify us. That we are people of the cross. That we're people uh, of Jesus Christ. The supreme sacrifice. And so people try to fill their lives with a lot of things. You all know this. You know, jobs, fame, money. Uh, you know, some people with drugs and alcohol. It can go on and on. And then they can never find a, anything that will fill that in their life. But I believe as Pentecostal, I have to say this. That not only does God want to save us and give us purpose in our life, but with the fall of Adam, he died spiritually. And the glory of God that robed him and clothed him, he immediately noticed was God. And so there's something to be said about the Spirit of God in our life. I believe even as Pentecostals, we need to realize that God desires to fill us with the Spirit. Amen? God desires to fill us with the Holy Ghost. What did He tell His disciples as He was ascending? He said to them, Go and tarry. Wait for the promise. And He's going up. He's promising them that He will send them the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that when the day of Pentecost, and, and I looked at that on Pentecost Sunday, and I don't want to be redundant, that 50 to be redeemed. Uh, that, that, you know, it was 50 days after that they left, uh, that they left uh, the, 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 the land of Egypt, the Israelites, 50 days later, God gave Moses the law upon Mount Sinai. There's something to be said about 50, Brother Doug, that the only way that we can really fulfill the law and find purpose in life is when the Spirit of God writes the law upon our heart. Brother Dennis, not upon tablets, not upon a heart of stone, but upon a heart of flesh that God begins to write the law. And through His Spirit, He helps us to do what is right before Him. I think... This evening, it's important to know that uh, when the Holy Ghost came as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house and there was cloven tongues of fire, the Bible says that they begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I believe to fill the purpose and the void in our life, it's important for each of us to earnestly seek the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. It is important in our lives. And I want to encourage each of us to do that. Don't let it be an old experience, but let it be a fresh experience. What did James say about the tongue? He said the tongue was very evil. It was very powerful. Think about that tongue. Uh, the, the little bit that's in the horse's mouth. That big old body, but that bit turns him from side to side. Shows him which direction to go. Uh, you know, the, 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 the little uh, helm on the boat. Uh, it's a little bit, but it, but, but it guides the boat. And if we're not careful, this tongue can get us in trouble. So being filled with the Holy Ghost. With evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen. When God gets in your tongue, amen, he'll change your life. Amen. He wants to fill. Amen. There's no love like God's love. And I believe that really feeling the purpose of life, part of it from a Pentecostal perspective, is being filled with the Holy Ghost with speaking in other tongues. Amen. The Word 
God challenges us? Have we received the power? Since we believe, amen, God wants to fill with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of speaking in other tongues. It's amazing. There was early morning hours, and some was assuming that they were drunk with new wine. But all standing up, they said, these men are not drunk with new wine, as you suppose. But this is what was promised. Amen. It is the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, what is our identity? What is our purpose? The first two things of our purpose. I believe is being saved. And I believe a lot in our life we filled with the Spirit. So we're led by the Spirit. Romans 6, 7, and 8 focuses upon the Christian life walking in the Spirit. And when we are saved and when we're filled with the Spirit, we will walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. We won't be filled fulfill the desires of the flesh, but our life will be lived in accordance to God's word and will be lived by His I want to ask a third question. So, what is our identifier? Our name. I believe that we're identified not only by who we are. My identifier is a big thing, you know. Who am I? Every time I just got to the hospital today, every time I went to rooms to the it is my job to say hello. My name is Robert, I'm the chaplain. Blah, 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 blah. You come and you get your blood drawn. If I know you, I may not identify you. But if my boss is around, I, I, I may not identify myself. But if my boss is around, I'll always identify. Because if every patient is our policy, that we identify ourselves. So our identifier, more than just our name, but we are identified through Jesus Christ. Our purpose, we're saved. We were designed to have a relationship. God. We were wired to worship. And we were designed to be filled with the Spirit, every one of us, with evidence of speaking in other tongues. So let's ask this question. Why are we still here? Why are we still here? You ever think that? Why am I still here? Well, you know, why are you still here? Why am I still here? Well, I believe we can answer that from a biblical basis. What's that? You hit the nail on the head, brother. Someone look up 1 Peter chapter number 5 and read verse number 5 through 11. We can all turn there if you'd like. I just don't want to be the only one speaking tonight. 1 Peter chapter number 5. Start reading at verse number 5 down to verse number 11. I was ye younger to make yourself unto the elder. Be all of you son Why are we still here? 
I believe that God wants us to show society that we need to practice humility in our life. Sometimes you just have to take the higher road, even though it seems like the lower road. Right? Sometimes you just practice humility in the way that you approach the situation. And then Peter said that the younger should submit themselves to the older. 